All right, folks. So we finished our previous conversation on the, you know, week three and four, this slide. So in this one, basically know the enzymes. You should be able to match the, um, Uh, the name of the enzyme and its function and it, it is applied to the entire table here okay in terms of the mutations understand the definition here and you should be able to identify the term and its description match them okay i will totally ask that um, you should be able to recognize a type of mutation like silent point or frame shift mutations and I should be able to recognize them based on the description. Um, the agents that cause mutations. So here, um, you don't need to memorize specific agents, but you rather need to know what they do. Like nucleotide modifying changes one parent to another. Okay. Just that. Not specific changes. Just that. Intercalating agents. What do they do? This. Ionizing radiation, what does it do? Single double strand break. Non ionizing radiations, what does it do? Pyrimidine dimers. So the stable here um, summarizes this. So nucleoside analogs, what do they do? What type of mutation? Nucleotide modifying agent, what do they do? What type of mutation? Again, I'm not going to ask you whether it's GC to AT or AT to GC. Just know that it changes one parent to another. Intercalating agents. How it works. Type of the mutation. Ionizing radiation. What does it do? Type of mutation. Non-ionizing radiation. What does it do? Type of mutation. Okay. Now, regarding the repair, there are two mechanisms here, nucleotide excision, photoreactivation. You should be able to answer questions like what's going on in photoreactivation. Photolyase is activated and removes time and dimer. What happens in nucleotide excision repair? Know the functions of these enzymes. Um, AIMS test. There's going to be one question on AIMS test. It is the hardest question in the entire exam. Know the process. Understand that we identify the oxytrophic mutant that requires histidine to grow. And then we expose that mutant to a mutagen. And if mutagen actually is mutagenic, it reverts mutant back. So mutant that was unable to grow on the medium without histidine now can grow on the medium with histidine i strongly recommend to watch the review video on the aims test i did a pretty good job explaining how it works um gene transfer so you need to know basically what's going like transformation what's going on in transformation here dna is incorporated into uh, a bacterial chromosome and the DNA is free DNA on the outside. Transduction, so two types, know what happens in each type. So generalized tr transduction on the left, okay? What is required for it? Lytic bacteriophage. What happens um, here? Pieces of fragmented bacterial DNA are packaged into new phage particles. Um, specialized transduction shown here what is required lysogenic bacteriophage what happens dna is inserted into bacterial chromosome match the description you should be able to respond you know uh, what happens in transduction um, conjugation i'm not going to ask anything about high frequency recombination stuff i'm not but i'm going to ask you about conjugation maybe not but i can okay this all right so basically understand be able to explain what is going on during the process of conjugation so it's a reception of a fertility plasmid from another bacterial cell 
riboswitches. All you need to know, riboswitches are in the RNA when they are on either transcription or translation, they go. When a small inhibitory molecule binds to uh, to a riboswitch, it changes the shape of riboswitch in RNA that puts riboswitch in off position and transcription or translation stop. Um, understand the structure of the typical operon, okay? Uh, the function of promoter to bind RNA polymerase, the function of operator to bind uh, the repressor protein, and the function of structural genes that usually produce some kind of some kind of an enzyme. And understand how inducible and repressible operons work. So basically, I, I, if I ask, you know, what's going on in case of uh, the tryptophan operon, tell me, well, when tryptophan accumulates, it binds to the repressor and the complex binds to the operator, stopping gene expression. And then when tryptophan is used up, um, repressor is not bound to operator anymore and RNA polymerase will initiate transcription and the genes are going to be expressed. So overall, just this is the storytelling. You should be able to tell the story within the operon. Now let's talk about uh, metabolic strategies. So definitions of catabolism, anabolism, um, endergonic, exergonic. Please understand that you should be able to identify a process, a biological process, as anabolic or catabolic, endergonic or exergonic. Classifications. These four terms, okay, what is the energy source? What is the carbon source? You should go both ways. So, for instance, I can tell you that um, I don't know. Uh, purple non-sulfur bacteria use light as the source of energy, and organic compounds as the source of carbon. So, what do we call them? Light as the source of energy. Photo, organic source of carbon. Heterotrophs. Okay, like um, most fungi, protozoan bacteria use. Uh, uh, organic source of carbon and organic chemical source of energy. What do we call them? Chemoheterotrophs. You should be able to match the description with the term. So I'm not going to ask you specifically anything about redox reactions by themselves, but you must know what reduction and oxidation is. I will be using these terms in the questions. So if the question says, blah, 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 is reduced, you must know that that blah, 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 blah receives an electron. Or something NADH is, oxida is oxidized, NADH loses the electrons. Understand the role for NADH, FADH2, okay? These this guys, these are electron carriers within the cell. And I'm not going to ask you the formulas, but you need to know uh, which is the oxidized form and which is reduced form. Um, enzymes, things to know. Increase the rate, but not the ratio yield of products. Okay. Understand how it works this, what substrate binds to. Um, not spent wasted, extremely specific, have optimal conditions, remember the optimal conditions. So if conditions are slightly different from optimal, enzyme will still work, but it won't be as efficient. Um, definitions, exoendoenzymes, constitutive versus regulated. Okay. Uh, regulation of enzymes, competitive versus non-competitive inhibition. Allosteric inhibition and non-competitive are the same. You should be able to say what's going on, like inhibitor and allosteric inhibition, where does it bind to allosteric side. Concept of allosteric activation. You must know what is apoenzyme, what is holoenzyme, and what is the role of a cofactor. So basically it complements the enzyme. 
uh, understand the negative feedback inhibition, which is illustrated right about here. Um, here, competitive inhibition, non-competitive. Those are definitions you should be able to um, explain. Now, uh, cellular respiration here in glycolysis. Things to know. What we start with, what we end up with. <clears throat> What happens in energy investment? What happens in energy payoff? The final products. Understand that it happens in uh, cytoplasm, whether it's bacteria or eukaryotes. And well, understand that glyceraldehyde three phosphate is the high energy intermediate. So uh, again, know the yield. Know that there are no carbon lost know the products and that it does not require oxygen and we produce basically two NADH and two ATP because four ATP are produced and two are used in the beginning. Okay, here, what happens during transition step? This, this is transition step, okay? What happens, what's produced? Carbon dioxide, NADH, acetyl-CoA. Then, things to know about Krebs cycle. These are intermediates that I can ask you about. I can ask how they are formed, how many carbons in each, and what happens when, say, isocitrate is converted to alpha ketoglutrate. NADH is produced and CO2 is released, and we go from six carbons to five carbons. Um, so that then you need to understand the yield for each step so since there are two pyruvates that are produced during glycolysis and a single pyruvate enters the transition step and then acetyl-CoA enters the Krebs cycle you need to know the products of transition step Krebs cycle and them together in molecules of CO2, molecules of NADH, molecules of FADH2, molecules of ATP. Electron transport chain. So you need to know what is the function here so that these guys, NADH and FADH2, carry electrons to the um, electron transport chain. Electron transport chain is either in the membrane or in the mitochondria if it's a, a eukaryote here. Um, understand what happens to NADH and FADH2, they are oxidized. What happens to the complexes of electron transport chain? They're reduced. And what the energy of electrons is used for? To create electrochemical gradient. Um, what is electro, uh, how it's, 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 it's created? Hydrogen ions are pumped across the membrane, so this side has high concentration of hydrogen ions. This side has low concentration of hydrogen ions. And then diffusion of hydrogen ions uh, provides the energy. So basically movement of hydrogen ions provides the energy for um, the synthesis of, of ATP, okay? From ADP and phosphate. And at the end of electron transport chain, electrons are accepted, they reduce oxygen and together with two hydrogens, they produce water. So oxygen is the final electron acceptor. Um, this is the summary just because of the yields. Okay. Um, here, so final electron acceptor in aerobic respiration, final electron acceptor in anaerobic respiration, final electron acceptor in fermentation, okay? Understand that electron transport chain in aerobic or anaerobic respiration um, functionally are the same. Um, why some organisms cannot respire? So no cytochrome oxidase, no enzymes that protect against reactive oxygen species, um, that. 
In terms of fermentation, as I mentioned, know that final electron acceptor is an organic compound. There are two types of fermentation here, lactic and alcoholic. Know that in lactic fermentation, the final electron acceptor is pyruvate and an alcoholic acetaldehyde. Streptococci, you know, species, transmission, diseases, whether or not there is a vaccine. Again, species, transmission, diseases. There is a vaccine for strep pneumonia. Um, I do hope it makes sense. Now, when we say diseases, I want to particularly highlight the progression here. So go from pharyngitis to scarlet fever to rheumatic fever and potentially toxic shock syndrome. That's for strep pyogenes. Um, this, literally know this, this flow chart, the terms, that's it. So I can ask you what happens during demination, transamination, or how fatty acids are converted to acetyl-CoA in the process of beta oxidation. But, um, so here's the thing. You need to, so I can ask, you know, what's the product of fatty acids oxidation, acetyl-CoA, or demination, transamination, what's going on? Amino acids are converted either into pyruvate or intermediaries of the Krebs cycle, but know the connections here. Photosynthesis, uh, definitions of phthalocoids and grana. Understand that pigments absorb light, don't memorize which pigments have which color. Understand what generally happens during light dependent and light independent reactions. Here, uh, light dependent reactions. Know the difference between oxygenic and unoxygenic photosynthesis. Understand how ATP is generated, the energy of electron, um, the energy of light used to energize the electron, which in turn um, goes through the electron transport chain, creates electrochemical gradient, and it's used to produce ATP. And then that electron binds to NADP to form NADPH. Um, so you have uh, an electron carrier as well as ATP. Um, understand the role of water. The oxygen in the water molecule is essentially oxidized to molecular oxygen during photosynthesis to replace the electrons in a photosystem too. And for Calvin-Benson cycle, very basic. So you've got three molecules of carbon dioxide, three carbons, inorganic and 15 carbons in three molecules of RUBP. At some point you form six molecules uh, of three phosphoglyceric acid. So three plus 15, 18, this is 18 carbons in these six molecules. And then you use ATP and NADPH to essentially reduce phosphoglyceric acid to G3P glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, which is an intermediate in glycolysis. So one of the molecules of G3P leaves the cycle and is used to produce glucose. Five molecules of G3P that contain total 15 carbons are converted into three molecules of RUBP, ribulose biphosphate, and the cycle starts again. The most important takeaway, three molecules of inorganic compound CO2, which contain three carbons, are converted into carbohydrates, okay? Three organic carbons. So that's kind of a general idea what you need to know. I mentioned the previous one. So um, let me know if you have any questions and um, I will see everybody next week.